Merry Christmas! This wasn't planned to be a holiday special, but I realized halfway through writing this that this was technically a Christmas game, so we're gonna roll with that, and you're gonna be okay with that. Okay. Fine, thank you. Yes, yeah, fine. Thanks. Okay. Arkham Origins isn't really a game that anyone deserved or needed. We wanted it, but that's only because we wanted a worthy sequel to Arkham City, something Arkham Knight surely will be. Like my LEGO Lord of the Rings review, this will double as a review of a specific game, but it will also apply to the series as a whole, since much of the foundation of this game is virtually the same as Arkham City. That being said, there were some signs that Origins was just going to end up being the black sheep of the Arkham franchise the whole time. First of all, the game was being made by Warner Brothers Montreal, not Rocksteady Games. Second of all, the game was going to be a prequel, meaning the game had no intention of being the epic conclusion to Arkham Asylum and City. And if you paid attention to media coverage right before and immediately after the game's release, you could tell some things were off about this game. Reviews weren't posted until the day of release when the embargo lifted, and besides being called a lesser version of Arkham City, the game was called unfinished and rightfully so. Just from a pure technical standpoint, none of the main console versions are quote-unquote complete. The PS3 and 360 versions are bug-riddled and cause massive slowdown, crashing, and other bugs, and the Wii U version, despite having less critical bugs, didn't get the multiplayer mode the other versions got, or the eventual DLC. And then there's this monstrosity. The game doesn't look that great either, with blurry textures and a very grey aesthetic and copious amounts of snow. It sometimes feels like the snow is only there to hide the lack of originality and care that was put into this game. From a technical standpoint, the game is garbage, but even from a conceptual and gameplay standpoint, the game was just disappointing because it didn't feel new. I was so excited for this game that I actually purposely avoided all media coverage so I could go into it blind, and still, there were very few points where I was actually surprised by the game. But despite all that, I played this game to death. Why did I do that? Maybe it's because I'm legally in. The game's concept and story is probably its most inviting element. As far as prequels go, it actually succeeded in drawing me in because of it. You're a novice Batman, traveling alone on Christmas Eve during a blizzard, with eight assassins out to get you, while you try and track down Black Mask for putting the bounty on your head. The advertisements for this game really played at the sheer number of villains who were going to make appearances in this game, and a lot of fan-pleasing characters made the cut. That being said, the game definitely suffers from sequel, or should I say prequel syndrome, wherein by trying to top the amount of villains and most intense moments of the previous entries, the game tries for quantity over quality, and just shoves in as many recognizable faces as possible without actually thinking of how to implement them all in seamlessly. There are just too many characters for them all to get equal amounts of screen time, and some fans will feel cheated, especially since teasers gave the impression that certain characters would interact with each other much more often. That's another thing. Assassins never really fight Batman at the same time, only individually so Batman can actually win the fight. The teaser gave a different impression. It just feels a bit contrived and not like the narrative was woven around the idea of multiple assassins competing to take Batman down. Some assassins even get relegated to side missions or even cutscenes. I'm not a particular fan of comic books, but I have a particular attraction to the Batman universe. I spent a few hours on the Batman wiki reading up on character bios, and it's hard not to be disappointed by the way some characters were shown so briefly, while others had such plot-critical roles. On a related note, it's hard for tension to develop in the story because we know this is a prequel, and any show-stopping moments or twists can't be so big that they cause inconsistencies with the later games. Bruce Wayne isn't going to die, we know that. By making this a prequel, the writers gave themselves very little room for creativity, but I do think that the end result had some shining moments. Midway through the game, the plot takes an interesting direction when it borrows a trope made famous by the Zelda series, and I stuck around for the whole story because it managed to hook me. I actually talked about Origin's story way back in my early video, Killing in Games, where I talked a bit about the game's attitude toward killing. Batman is well known for refusing to kill any criminals in order to differentiate himself from the man who killed his parents. My main problem with this has always been that pounding thugs into submission isn't exactly how Gandhi would have resolved things. But even so, by refusing to kill criminals, Batman is indirectly causing the deaths of hundreds of innocents, who will eventually be killed when the criminals escape their imprisonment. With all that said, I think Origins actually elicited a stronger emotional reaction from me with its plot than City or Asylum. It talks a lot about corruption in every facet of society, and even the double standard of justice that Batman has for himself, from villains such as Anarchy and the Riddler. I don't work with criminals. You need to turn yourself in. Tell you what, I'll turn myself in as soon as you do the same. You don't consider yourself a criminal, do you? The suit, the gadgets, the sense of entitlement. You're just another rich kid atoning for his fiscal sins. Such a shame. 
I won't say too much about him, but the Joker, played by Troy Baker, is so well written and performed in this game that I think it's my favorite incarnation of him yet, and this is a role that is not shy to good performances. Looks like I'm gonna need to find a new playmate. Oh, and we were having so much fun too! <laughs> The climax of the game, despite me knowing it was a prequel, featured a situation revolving around Batman's refusal to kill, resulting in a sequence of unpredictable and tense scenes. That is commendable, especially for a prequel. Although the other Arkham games do this well, I like the open world portions to feature more enemies that have the capability to hunt me down as opposed to just having enemies that are stuck on the ground or rooftops. Flying away from a fight may look cool, but I'd like it to be a bit harder to get away from enemies, maybe requiring some quick thinking stealth. There is a section of the city with some really deadly snipers that can kill you pretty swiftly, but there just weren't enough significant threats in the game that weren't on the ground. The mechanics of the game feel very similar to Arkham City's, with lots of similar melee attacks, stealth environments, and gadgets. The controls are in general very good, but much like in past games, there are occasional kerfuffles. I'll be trying to pounce on some enemies when I completely miss the ledge because of unclear button prompts, or you'll lose your combo in a fight because you accidentally got stuck on a wall, or an enemy will interrupt your counter without you realizing it until too late. While well, replaying the game on New Game Plus, which has a higher difficulty level, while letting you keep your upgrades, I found I was blowing through the city and stealth parts while getting stuck on the combat sections. I'm talking about some serious difficulty spikes here. I actually really enjoyed my time revisiting the stealth parts because I had refined a lot of my strategies and I knew the gadgets and areas inside out, which was really satisfying. I wasn't overly impressed with the combat sections though, where it seems increasing the difficulty is as simple as jamming more and more enemies with weapons and armor into the room. Early sections in the new game plus were now comparable to those later in the regular game. It was frustrating because the game wasn't designed to handle so many things going on at once that getting hit isn't always the player's fault, and just a side effect of the cramped environments. It felt unfair at points. I found myself trying to pull off combos when I'd immediately be shut down by an invincible armored thug, or I'd get caught in the practically unavoidable range of a knife enemy. Seriously, fuck those guys! The combo system involves moving between enemies and timing punches for critical hits, but you can pretty much win any fight by just playing it safe and flipping over enemies, spamming sticky grenades, and pulling off counters which, let's face it, are a bit too generous in their window. Boss encounters shake things up a bit, switching between combat and stealth, and the scenarios really play into the boss's established character. The sheer intensity of these fights can be frightening and just as expected when the game makes you lose the occasionally overpowered detective vision, it is a great way to make you feel frightened and really scared of the situation you're in. The stealth sections are still my favorite, and although they're probably the least unchanged, you get some well-designed areas with lots of vents, balconies, and enemy placement that does emphasize patience over rushing in for takedowns. The game does have an achievement system that awards you with XP and even certain upgrades, and although I wasn't hugely interested in these, you get graded after each enemy encounter, and remaining unseen when taking down enemies with a variety of different maneuvers and gadgets gave you lots of XP bonuses, which gave me reason to try out maneuvers that require lots of patience and set up to pull off. The same goes for combat encounters promoting large combos and variations through use of quick use gadgets. This system succeeded in convincing me to get every upgrade, but the upgrades themselves are poorly thought out. By my second playthrough I found that the gadgets may be way too overpowered for stealth sequences, allowing me to take out at least three enemies per encounter simply using the grapple gun and a variety of gas tanks and gargoyles in the area, and by that point the remaining enemies were so spread out that picking them off one by one was no problem. Despite enemies growing slightly more intelligent as the game progresses, for example shooting down gargoyles, it doesn't make the game any harder because vents and grates are never checked, enemies are never smart enough to work in packs, and they never know where explodable walls are, etc. Sometimes I just got bored of always using gadgets and I would try and beat the whole sections using only melee attacks and that wasn't that hard either. Batman has too many gadgets and since you refill after every encounter, you don't even think twice about using a precious item. The Last of Us is a really good example of a stealth game that teaches you to value your limited weapons, whereas Arkham Origins wants to impress you with how many fancy toys it has. Comparisons to Arkham City are unavoidable, but they're not without reason. The city in both games is shared, and with half of Origins' map being a snowy, less decrepit version of Arkham City, and that doesn't really help Origins stand out from City. Arkham City had a lot of excellent theming and character to all its locations, and the industrial sector felt like the Joker's playground, and the museum felt like the Penguin's House of Horrors. You had a lot of excellent environmental designs at work. Origins just feels bland by comparison. There's one really good Christmas themed area, and uh, um, this, this thing. Apparently all of their creativity went into this one side mission. It looks way too good compared to the rest of the game. Most of the city feels way too similar, and by making it bigger it makes it much more obvious how little content they had to fill it with. The game lacks many of the cool landmarks that Arkham City had. 
There's a huge bridge that gets blown up at one point, and having to sneak into Gotham PD is really cool, but not when compared to the courthouse scene from Arkham City, which is what opened the game. The theming and setting of Arkham City succeeded in making me feel more intimidated and immersed in the world, which I think is due to a smaller map that was more densely populated with enemies, and where the actual city was crumbling and full of death traps. The Batcave doesn't help that feeling. It's a barely used hub area that doesn't provide many functions, besides a bit of fan service. It's just a thing to put on the back of the box. It's hard to feel in danger when you can go and chill at your house whenever you want. Fast travel also diminishes the tense atmosphere and it makes me think that a smaller map might have been a better design choice. The main problem is that we're not actually flying the bat plane and we're just sort of waiting for it to take us places, which isn't really that fun. The post game is almost non-existent. Every interior environment in Origins is just empty when you revisit them. I'm talking not a single person in any building. It's creepy, and it also keeps you from completing the stealth challenges, since almost all the stealth locations are inside and do not respawn. The side missions are pretty cool, but I mostly enjoyed them for the backstory and the villains they introduced. A few are really memorable, like the Mad Hatter and Deadshot ones, but others just have you scrambling around the city, beating up a crowd of thugs, then using a gadget to either blow up or disable something at least six times. Oh, and the Riddler puzzles, which I kind of completed all of them because apparently I had a lot of free time back then, almost entirely for the reward of audio recordings, which gives backstory to the supporting cast, which is something I kind of love. In terms of content that's actually new to Origins, you get a detective mode that is slightly expanded, that essentially boils down to looking around for a red icon. Rewind time if you can't find one, go find the next red icon. The investigations are cool, but it's just a set of glorified cutscenes. The game also has a challenge mode, but beyond being able to play as Deathstroke, I didn't really have much of an interest in it because, quite honestly, the core gameplay loses a lot of its appeal once it's taken out of any story context. The usual attention to Batman lore is present in this game, and in that regard it does reach the same level as Arkham Asylum and City. Now finally, despite all the obvious problems with the game, it's hard to completely condemn it when it has a lot of good elements. Your opinion and mine are probably tainted by the fact that it has a legacy to live up to, and although the technical problems are completely inexcusable, like, they're terrible, like, fix that, please. This game is based on an incredibly good foundation, and the amount of hours I put into it are a testament to just how fun a subpar Arkham game can be. Just make sure you get the Wii U version for a good price, otherwise you've made a poor investment. Anyway, that's all I have to say about the game. Thank you everyone for watching. Please have a great new year. I am now going to go lock myself in a closet and play Fire Emblem for two weeks. Um, so I guess to conclude things, here's my friend Charlie who has a few messages for all of you. Wasn't that video great? Damn, that was a fine ass video. Good job, Kevin. My name's Charlie, also known as Charleston here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, then you should probably check out Kevin's review of SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. It'll please your genitals. Kevin and I are part of a gaming channel called Nitrous Turtle. Right now, there's hopefully an annotation on screen that'll link to our first episode of us playing Trials Evolution, which is my personal favorite video of ours. I swear to God, Kevin, if you don't put annotations on the screen, I'm gonna kill you. And I'm also gonna be promoting my own stuff, because that's why I'm doing this recording. I primarily do anime parodies, but I also have a couple of anime review type videos up right now, and I also have some video game reviews that are being worked on right now. You can check out my latest video, which is a Christmas special, and it's probably my personal favorite video on the channel. It's pretty short, so give it a chance. Please? Please? PLEASE!